Hi there, it's Sarah with Ruffles and Rain Boots and we're making farmhouse gnomes with boots today. So you can see we have hot cocoa cups, a lot of extra additions, and the star of this show is actually, boop, the gnome ornament boots. If you'd like to make them, stick around with us. Now, as always, please hit that like button so I know you're here crafting with us. Hit subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. All right, so we're gonna start out with no pattern. I will link all of the supplies you'll need in the link below. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, these are the most important things, these little ornament booties. You can find them anywhere. And we're gonna disassemble them, if you will. So we're gonna make a simple sock gnome body. You can use any of my patterns, the no sew pattern, the sewing pattern. Doesn't matter, we're just gonna um, make a body that's pretty solid. So we're gonna add about three quarters of a cup, or a half to three quarters of a cup of rice, beans, or some other filler. And then we're gonna top as tall as we want our gnomes with polyfill. So a lot of people ask how I get them so even, we're just rolling it between our fingers and uh, the palms of our hand and on the table. All right, so we're gonna cut off a good portion of this extra long sock we got at the Dollar Tree and then we're just gonna tie it off with twine and secure it with a teeny tiny bit of glue because I have a daughter. Okay, so we're going to make sure that our test hat, or we're gonna test fit our hat to make sure we know how long to make our beard. And so we wanna make sure at this point we are not gluing this hat, okay? So just make sure we're not gluing it. We're going to be giving it a hem uh, as well as cutting our beard. So speaking of our beard, for this guy, I am using two layers of fur. One is a darker brown, kind of frosted brown, and one is a gray. And I did that because it gives a lot of dimension and depth, but you don't have to do it. You can use any beard you want. I cut a V, but you can cut a U. You can even cut a square and trim it off to, for a tailored look. The sky's the limit. Just click that link up above to learn how to cut faux fur properly. And this is always optional, but I cut a little mustache out of a rectangle and layered it on top as well. So you can see here, you just split it down the middle. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start assembly and our little gnome here, first we roll up that hat to get it out of the way. We do wanna cover this join. So we're going to put the brown, put on the gray, and then we're going to just put that mustache right on top. We're gonna bring down um, our uh, beard in just a, or our um, hat in just a second, but we do need to know where our nose is and that's gonna help us with our hemming and the sizing of our hat. Okay, so now on to our hat. Just pull it off and give it a little hem on exactly where you like it. You can add fur trim, you can add a ribbon trim, you can hand embellish this, just whatever you would prefer. I'm using hot glue and using the uh, hat or the sock itself to make the, the brim. Okay, so I always like to put the nose on first. It gives me a great idea of where this guy is, but you're also going to want to flip it around and secure one part of the back. We're going to add arms later, so you do not want to secure the hat all the way around, but we do need to know where the hat's going to sit so that we can do the top part. Now this is 100% optional. Um, I didn't have any more of the thin burlap ribbon. <laughs> I wanted to match the boots, but um, so I just made my own burlap ribbon here. You don't have to do this, uh, especially if you have more craft supplies than I did. I'm using a button just to decorate the fella's hat here. The lady will get something else. Okay, so now for this part, which is the top of the sock we got at the dollar store, we're just gonna cut it off to an angle. And why we're gonna do that is because we don't need this big piece and we also wanna have coordinating um, fabric for our arms. So you don't have to choose to make the arms. I personally love them, but this was how I got the fabric for the arms. I'm going to roll in the edges of this so that I can make a little fur pom-pom and put it on the end. Okay, so once that's done, here's the star of the show. We are going to cut apart the ornament and we're going to cut off the top of the thing that hangs it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach these two ornaments, or sorry, these two boots together with hot glue. That's it. And then you do need to put it sort of on the back and the front. And then that is going to be the base for our little farmhouse gnome body. So all we're gonna do is add a generous amount of hot glue, make sure his uh, beard isn't tucked under, and then just lay him on top. 
Now to make the arms, it's super simple. I just used that cut off piece. Um, and at this point you will need clay hands or wooden hands. Um, you know, we're gonna, if you're gonna go this route, wooden beads work as well as clay. I just have a lot of clay, so I'm using it. So all we're gonna do is do exactly what we did on the top of the hat, and that is to roll in the edges of our pieces. And then we're gonna hide that seam. You can see where they join. You're gonna hide that against the body tuck up one edge underneath the hat and then don't cut them yet because you whatever you're going to hold in the hands you want to sort of figure that out after you have your bobble okay so you can see there all right so now moving on um this little guy i already measured i'm going to show you what i made and then remade because i didn't put it on video so you'll see the cocoa cups in just a little bit but if you want to make the farmhouse girl gnome here we are we're going to do the body the same way so we are also going to even attach her to the boots and that's going to help us determine uh, her braid length you don't have to make braids if you've never made braids i have a detailed tutorial i'll link that above but it's basically you slice the faux fur in long vertical thin sections and then you're going to braid it um, putting the fabric side of the braids tucked in and again that's it. You'll see the um, detail in the other video if you need to. We're going to tie off the bottom and the top with twine, and then you just make another one. All right, so once you have them both made, we're going to lay down our little lady, and we're going to place the braids however far you want them. So if you want them to drag on the ground, you're going to want to drop those a little bit lower than I have here, but we just secure them with hot glue, and now we can move on to the next part, which you've already seen. We're just going to hem our hat the same exact way. We're gonna attach our nose uh, with a little hot glue. We're going to attach to the top of the nose as well, and then we're going to tack down one place in the back for this hat. Okay, so here is so much fun. If you want a pattern, I have one for the Cozy Gnome sewing pattern. It's the same apron. Um, what we're doing here is I used hot glue, so if you don't want to get out a stitch, uh, a needle and thread, you don't have to, but you can make pleats with the hot glue just by squishing it together, and then you're going to put that onto the Girl Gnome, cutting it to whatever length skirt you want. Then you're just going to make two straps out of the felt in coordinating colors, and glue those on right to the edge, because we are going to cover that edge up so that it doesn't look all gunky. And then you're going to hot glue those two in place. Now here's the tie. So this has to be long enough to just go around the lady, <laughs> the lady gnome. Uh, so you're going to glue down the top part of the straps. And then you're going to flip the whole lady over and just make a knot. And I would always secure it with a little tiny bit of hot glue because, again, my daughter likes to play with the gnomes. So I just don't want anything coming apart. Okay, so once you have that, you're going to flip her back over. And we're just going to add a little bib section here. And it's just a tiny little rectangle I cut to fit that spot. Easy peasy, right? Love dressing up the gnomes. Okay, so if you want to make the cocoa mugs, <laughs> You're going to Ray Dunn style your whipped cream with a little snake of white, and then you're just going to, like a cobra, uh, you're just going to build it up on top of each other. So there you go for the white. You're going to make two of those, and now you're going to make a really thick log of red or whatever color you want to make. I wanted um, those little camp mugs that have the black rim. So what I did is I made a thick snake of red, and I cut it in half. And then I kind of shaped it so it looks like a little mug, little rounded off edges and stuff where I cut. And then I'm going to take the brown, I'm going to create a circle, squish it down, and then put it between the two reds. So you see here. And then kind of press them together, not too hard, but then roll it so that it all becomes, in, you know, in love, no, uh, squish together, and then take a thin line of black. So this is my personal preference because I wanted sort of a fireside coffee mug, you know, cocoa mug chat kind of thing. And so I just put a little thin black snake around the middle of my combined mugs, and then I'm going to roll it flat and squish it. Squish, 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 so it's part of the mug and the cocoa, or pretend cocoa, if you will. And then so you can kind of see I'm just kind of squishing it, make sure it's even-ish, uh, and then I'm going to cut right down the center there again, and it's a super thing. Roll it. Don't press down. Just roll it and move the knife around, and then you're just kind of fixing the top end, 
kind of, you know, making sure it's all um, rounded off and not uh, sharp or anything, because then you're just going to put on your little dollop of cocoa. And then you're going to bake those. If you want, you can stick a piece of wire in between those to make them never, ever come off or use some clay glue. And once you have those, this is the part I would advise you measure <laughs> before you put on your hands. Um, here you can see I am putting the hands together and they're holding the mug. And that's it. Aren't they so cute? And yes, I'm a little late posting this. There's already 10,000 shares on this uh, on my website. But what do you think? Let me know down below. Would you make these guys? Would you like them? Uh, as always, thank you for being here with me. Please like this video and subscribe to Ruffles and Rain Boots for more crafty fun.